welcome to the video guys. So despite the UK wide lockdown that we're all living in, where the government has essentially grounded us, we have what I'm sure you would agree is a bunch of crazy people now suggesting we should charter flights from Eastern Europe to bring in migrants so they can work in the fields, picking fruit and vegetables. This is of course while many people are losing their jobs here in the UK both British nationals and of course migrants who have come here over the past few years. So it would barely make any sense to bring any more people in. And also if you're locking down a country and forcing its citizens to stay in their homes, except when absolutely necessary, you should never be bringing other people into that country. I mean, last I checked, there were still planes landing at UK airports from multiple different countries, which are not just cargo planes, there are passengers coming in unchecked through the borders, which I have to say is a big fat slap in the face from the government to the people of this country that they are forcing to stay in their home. But the Ramon in Rag the Guardian was running an article just the other day complaining that we will need to import many more fruit and veg pickers because of course there's no one left in the UK apparently. With one of their usual fear mongering headlines, fruit and veg will run out unless Britain charters planes to fly in farm workers from Eastern Europe because apparently there's not enough of them here already and there's not enough British citizens to fill these 70 odd thousand jobs. Which I'm sorry to say, if they focus their time more on getting people from this country to work for them than trying to charter flights from abroad, they might not find themselves in this situation. From what I can tell, they go to Europe first before they even consider employing people in the UK, as we will see in this article. The UK urgently needs to fill 90,000 positions to pick crops that will otherwise die in the fields, warns Charity. Because I suppose a charity has all the information necessary to make this claim. Bit of a weird one that is if you ask me. Charter flights to bring in agricultural workers from Eastern Europe are needed as a matter of urgency. Otherwise, fruit and vegetables will be left unpicked in Britain's field, the government is being warned which I think you will agree is complete nonsense and to me just sounds like these people's interests are vested in getting people from Eastern Europe into the UK, not actually filling the jobs that are there. Let's be honest, there's more than 90,000 people in the UK on job seekers allowance who I'm sure would happily take this work if it was offered to them. Yes, granted, a fair old portion of them might not want it because obviously some people don't want to work, but 90,000 out of a couple of million that are likely on job seekers allowance shouldn't be too difficult to fill. And then let's not forget, given the bat flu situation, many people are out of work right now, especially in the hospitality and retail industry that has had all of the pubs and restaurants and shops shut down with the exception of course of food and pharmacies. Some large farms have already been chartering planes to bring in labour from Eastern Europe. Oh, so they're going to pay thousands of pounds for a chartered flight to get these people over from Eastern Europe when they could have spent thousands of pounds on trying to employ people here without the need to pay for airfares and then of course pay them to work for them. Farming organisations and recruitment agencies say that in the face of massive disruption to the agricultural sector caused by the spread of the bat flu, the government needs to step in and help organise more flights. No, they don't. The government can just offer the jobs to the people on the dole, as I've already said. And let's be honest, if they're so desperate for these workers, then surely the rules of supply and demand should apply. Meaning, you have more jobs than you could fill, therefore up the wages and more people might come and take them jobs. But oh no, you don't want to do that. You'd rather spend millions on importing 70 odd thousand people to this country, so you can then likely pay them minimum wage. I mean, we're only a couple of paragraphs in, and this article and the people behind it are already showing their main interest is getting people in rather than actually filling the jobs, like I've said. The government do not need to step in and organise more flights though, that is for sure. They need to close the borders to all passengers, end of story. They should have done this in mid-January when this whole situation started and the country wouldn't find itself in the position it's in now. That of course is on Boris Johnson and the people around him. Some 90,000 positions need to be filled, many in just a few weeks time. One leading supplier, the charity Concordia, was looking to bring in around 10,000 labourers, half from the EU and the rest from Russia, Moldova, Ukraine, Belarus, Georgia and Barbados but all of the non-EU countries are closed. 
On Wednesday, in a big setback, the Ukraine extended its lockdown from the 2nd of April until the 23rd. So, rather than employing 10,000 labourers from here, the charity Concordia wants to import half from the EU and the rest from a multitude of other countries from Eastern Europe and around the world. Can you actually believe this nonsense and that The Guardian is trying to promote it like people of the UK are going to be happy with this? I mean, for instance, how many of my viewers are now out of work at the moment because of this situation and we have shit weasels like these lot trying to import new workers when people over here have already lost their jobs or are stuck at home unable to work because the business is closed therefore not being paid their full pay if they're being paid anything at all. These charities and farm organisations, whoever they are, are the worst of the worst when it comes to snivelling shit weasels, I think you will agree. Stephanie Morell, Concordia's chief executive, said, Our recruitment outside the EU is stalled, which leaves us with Lithuania, which has closed its borders, Romania with no airplanes, and Bulgaria, which is our little beacon. Our little beacon, can you just hear these people? It's fucking incredible. Although Bulgaria is on a countrywide lockdown, farm workers are classed as key workers and can move around the country. But most airlines that operate in Bulgaria, including EasyJet, are grounded, as they should be. This was the means of spreading this thing around the world, let's be honest. A Wizz Air flight bringing in 450 people landed a week ago on Saturday. See, a week ago on Saturday they were still bringing people in when we were being told to be socially distant. And I would like to bet there are still people landing in the UK, that is for sure. We're talking about chartering planes to bring in workers. <sighs> Morell said it costs around 10000 for an hour's flight carrying 229 people. So that's €45,000, Sophia to London or around €250 Euros per person. And when you factor that in, that works out to be about £200,000 to bring in a 1,000 people. And somewhere along the lines, they said they wanted to bring in between 10,000 and 70 or 80,000 people. So we are talking absolute millions there. A lot of money that you could just put in to pay in the people of the UK to work these jobs. Morell, who said the plan was being actively discussed by both the National Farmers Union and the Association of Labour Providers, called on the government to help provide urgent clarity. Yeah, that clarity should be, employ people from the UK, you worthless snivelling shit weasels. If I put up reserves and guarantees to secure a charter flight, I need to know it can take off. Yeah, it can take off from wherever it wants, but the government needs to ensure that it cannot land in this country. There are people out of work here because of this situation. We don't need to bring any more people here. And let's be honest, bringing people in is another way to spread this shit show even more around our country. I don't care. Right now, even asylum seekers should be turned away. So economic migrants are certainly not welcome. Some farms were struggling even before the crisis hit. A tightening of the labour market, a combination of Brexit, of course, and the boom in domestic economies of Eastern Europe, proving more attractive to seasonal workers. Oh, so they're a little bit salty, obviously, that Eastern Europe is now providing actual decent pay to its workers over there, meaning less are willing to come to other European countries and, of course, the UK, which, as they said there, had seen a decline in the number of fruit and vegetable pickers coming here. So they're now trying to incentivise it by offering them free flights and who knows what else. If they're willing to pay for the flights, who knows what else they're actually willing to pay for, rather than, of course, just getting British people to do this. These jobs. Last year, 98% of fruit pickers, now classed as key workers, came from outside the UK, the vast majority from Bulgaria and Romania, which I think shows that we have a massive problem with the way this system is being run by the powers that be. How can 98% of fruit pickers be from outside the UK, when hundreds of thousands if not millions of people are out of work and could easily take these jobs? British growers have been contacting companies in the hospitality sector to recruit laid-off staff. The British Summer Fruits website carries an interactive map showing the locations of farms around the UK and the jobs on offer, which I took a look at a moment ago. There is a fair few of them dotted around the UK, so they are out there. But The Guardian, of course, would rather promote the idea of importing new workers rather than giving it to the Brits. Because, of course, like Labour, The Guardian must hate the UK and its citizens. I'm sure that's a surprise to none of you. 
We are very optimistic about the ability of UK residents to come out and help us, Marston said. They may be people from Eastern Europe who were working here in the hospitality sector, who are relatively young and don't have that many ties and want a job, paying reasonable pay in reasonable conditions. And yes, many of them might be from Eastern Europe, but... Brits will hopefully jump on it as well, providing of course the pay is decent and they're not trying to mug you off. Which is always possible if they're trying to bring people in from Eastern Europe. With the Environment Secretary George Eustace saying we need to mobilise the British workforce to fill that gap and make sure our excellent fruit and vegetables are on people's plates over the summer months. There are already brilliant recruitment efforts underway by the industry and I would encourage as many people as possible to sign up. Which was actually reported before that Guardian article was ever made, but they seem to have ignored these facts here. From the Fresh Produce Journal, nearly 10,000 Brits apply for picking jobs. There has been a fantastic initial response to calls for UK residents to rescue this year's harvest, but there's still a long way to go. So within a week, they managed to get nearly 10,000 people to sign up. I highly doubt they were all Brits, though they were people eligible to at least work in the UK, because as we saw in the last article, a lot of them might well be Eastern European, who will not consider themselves British, let me tell you that. Like us, they take pride in their own country. Luckily for them, they don't get called racist for it. But given the 10,000 people already in the UK applied for these picking jobs, I would say charter flights are unnecessary. 10,000 in one week with absolutely zero press is not bad going. And I'm sure as time progresses, many more people will hear about it. So the Guardian and all those snivelling shit weasels who were calling for chartered flights to bring people over here when the country is locked down, go fuck yourself. Now before I go, I've started doing live streams and uploading gaming content on my second channel. If you would like to come and join me for a live stream to chat in real time, have an interest in gaming related content on YouTube or just want to follow me over there because you are a legend, the link will be down in the video description below and as a pinned comment. I hope to see you all there. Now as always, before I go, I want to thank our PayPal, Patreon, Subscribestar and YouTube members for supporting the channel along with everyone who watches my videos. Remember to let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Leave a like, subscribe with the notification bell and share this video as it helps the channel a lot and I'll see you all in the next one. There is a pattern consistent throughout history of oppressed people turning on the oppressors, slaves against their owners, the peasantry against the feudal barons, colonies, Mr. Verhofstadt, against their empires. <laughs> and that is why Britain is leaving. And it doesn't matter which language you use, we are going and we are glad to be going. We're off. <laughs>